Hi everyone, today I'm going to do a little bit of a behind the scenes video and show you a little trick that you can use to make small batches of soap. I'm calling this shaker soap, the shaker soap method. And what it does is it uses a shaker of some kind, something with a screw top lid that is very secure is ideal for this. Um, but also something that is uh, e easy to get soap out of. So instead of using a stick blender in a bowl or a jug, we're going to make a really small batch of soap inside this shaker. So I'm going to put the oil in and I'm going to add the lye solution. I'm going to shake it all up, agitate it like that, pour the soap into the mould and then we're done. This is really good because it's hard to make small batches of soap with a stick blender because it splashes and it just can be a bit of a pain. And this is pretty easy to wash up and clean up as well. So this is just a blender bottle drink shaker that I got for a couple of dollars at my local charity shop. Try and find something that's nice and secure, screw top lid. Don't do this if you're not absolutely confident that your bottle is secure. This cap does come off for drinking but it's very, very firm. So once I know that's on and I hold it like that, it's fine. So this recipe is very, very simple. It's going to be a Castile soap. So that's 100% olive oil and I'm making honey Castile soap. So it is, a, it is a test batch for me. I don't wanna make a whole lot of it. I've never actually made a Castile soap with honey in it before. I've got some beautiful local honey from a lady up the road who sells it. Um, she's got hives in her, um, on her property. And I'm going to be using Australian extra virgin olive oil and honey and just water for the lye solution and no, no colouring or no fragrance. I just want to see how it behaves by itself. So you can use this recipe for your own um, shaker soap uh, batch if you want to. But the point of this video is just to show you this method and to introduce you to this idea of using a shaker bottle to make your soap. This is great if you don't have a stick blender and you want to make soap, small batches just for your personal use. You don't need a stick blender. You can make small batches in a shaker. So the first thing I'm going to do is make my lye solution. I'm going to split the water in half. I want to use half ice because honey can really heat up and I don't want it to scorch. So I'm going to dissolve the honey in half the water and then use ice for the other half and hopefully that will work. But this is a test batch, so we're gonna find out. So I need 89 grams of water in total. So I'm gonna start with 45 grams, which is roughly half. It's not much. Whoops, 48. I'll take a little tiny bit out. Gee, it's a tiny amount of water, isn't it? There we go, that'll do. 45 and then I generally would from the research I did um, you would add about a teaspoon of honey per pound of oils and this is under a pound of oils it's only 400 grams a pound is somewhere around 500 grams so I'm going to use a small small teaspoon of honey this is roughly a metric teaspoon too which is bigger than a customary teaspoon so that's Roughly about right. I'm going to dissolve that in. So I've got my honey dissolved. Now I'm going to top up the rest of the lye water amount with ice. So I need another 45 grams approximately. This won't be many. Oh, 45, perfect. Now, I have got my gloves on and my safety goggles. You can't see me, but I'm wearing them. I've got my sodium hydroxide already measured out in my little container here, and I'm just going to mix that in. I'll remove this scale out of the way first. So we've got half ice and half honey water, and hopefully that won't scorch. Here we go. Um, this is 52 grams of sodium hydroxide. I'm just going to add it bit by bit. And really, 
keep that ice moving because you want to keep that solution as cool as possible. I can't detect any fumes coming off that, so that's really good. It's going a slight little pale yellow colour, but not too bad. That's great. Now I'm going to put the rest in. It's kind of fun doing this video because um, this is the kind of soap making that I do when I'm not recording videos. <laughs> um, this is kind of what I do on weekends and when I want to test out batches. Oh wow, look at it. Ah! Oh, holy moly. It's gone red. Wow, I did not expect that. Okay. Oh man, I cannot get over that color. So that honey has just kind of really scorched in there. It doesn't smell bad. It's not brown. It's close to brown though. It's a really iridescent red color. That's amazing. Anyway, this recipe is all about the shaker soap, not the honey, but that was interesting. Very interesting. Okay, that's that. Next job, weigh the oils. This is gonna be pretty easy soap. I'm going to pour 400 grams of my extra virgin olive oil straight into here. There we go. 400. Now we're ready to make the soap. This is a pretty easy one. It's going to be a really interesting colour with that dark olive oil. So I've got my slightly scorched honey lye solution. I'm going to pour that straight into the olive oil. If you were adding colour or fragrance or essential oils or anything else to your soap, uh, you would maybe, depending on the colour, you might want to mix it in to the oil before you add the lye solution. Um, you could mix this up for a bit first till you get to a trace and then add your essential oils. Um, the beauty of this is it's kind of a test batch philosophy so you really have to try things and see how they work. Now to mix the soap it's as easy as screwing on the lid of your shaker. You could use a Tupperware shaker just if you're going to do this though don't use this for anything else but soap making so try and get a second hand one if you can. Make sure you've got your lid on securely it's all straight and you've got your cap down and then hold it firmly and shake. This is going to take a while because it is olive oil soap which is notoriously slow to trace but the honey added will speed it up a little bit because any sugar is an accelerant. Uh, it accelerates tracing soap making. So you're looking for the signs of emulsification I hope you can all hear me above the shaking. Uh, so the colour will go a bit lighter and we want to see that the oil and the lye are completely emulsified. It's getting a little bit lighter. It's quite a workout. Other soap recipes would be a lot faster than this, but this is olive oil soap for you. It's very slow. I think that's enough. It looks emulsified to me. I'm going to take this lid off and have a little peek. So I hope you can see that, just a little bit of a close up. It's not quite tracing, it's almost at a light trace, but um, as you can see on the back of my spoon, there's no separating out of the oils. I can't see any oil there at all. 
So that soap batter is, uh, while it's not really thickly traced, it's definitely emulsified. So it shouldn't separate on me. Amazing. All right. It's got a great color with the extra virgin olive oil as well. I'm just gonna pour that now. Should get about four of these bars out of this, I think. These are just the silicon molds from Kmart here in Australia. You can buy these from Kmart. Um, I really like the shape of these just for my day-to-day -day shower soap. They're just the right size for me. Oh, four in a little bit. <laughs> I should have put that into the other ones. And that's it. So you can put the lid back on that and just let it sit for a few days so that that soap inside, it all saponifies. It'll make it a lot easier to clean. The other experiment I'm going to do with this batch is I'm gonna try and do a C-pop on this, so an oven process. I'm gonna watch it, just let, let it set up and get firm first. And then I'm gonna, just gonna put it in the oven on about 60 degrees Celsius for a little while, just to force the gel. Although the honey may make it gel by itself. Well, I'm back now. It's the afternoon. It's about four o'clock. The soap has been in the oven for a few hours, just on very, very low heat. Well, actually it was on heat for probably about an hour and then I turned it off when I could see that it had fully gelled. So I have forced this soap to saponify using some heat from the oven uh, and it turned out really well. It's not as dark as I thought it might be. It's quite creamy, but this is interesting. Check this out. This is a great example. It looks like an aero bar, <laughs> uh, but this is what's called silicon rash. There's nothing wrong with this. It's perfectly good soap. Um, this is completely saponified, so it's okay for me to touch it. See how it's all pockmarked? It's, it's got all bubbles. That's a classic thing that happens when you oven process soap in individual silicon molds. So it's a little bit annoying and part of the test today was to see if I could avoid that. But I, yeah, I got it again, so never mind. Uh, but the soap will still be great to use. It smells really good. It's just got this beautiful, creamy olive smell. It's amazing. I'm gonna put it like that. Uh, yeah, so there you go, there's the soap. Like I said, it's nearly fully saponified. Um, and made in the shaker, so it was easy to do. There's my little, short little bar. Well, thanks everyone. I hope you enjoyed that. I just wanted to show you this little technique for making soap in a shaker bottle. Um, like I said, it's great if you wanna do small batches, little test batches like this one, or if you don't have a stick blender or you don't want a stick blender, this is a good alternative way to make soap. Perfectly fine for small household batches. Um, all you need to do is get a little shaker of some sort, just make sure it's something secure and off you go. Thanks everyone, I'll see you again soon.